CTV News political commentator, former NDP leader Tom Mulcair, who has been very patient, joining us from Ottawa, watching all of his former colleagues speak, uh, listening in as our coverage continues here. So your reaction, you saw the vote, you saw how it played out, you saw what the NDP, the Conservatives, the Liberals had to say. What do you make of it, Tom? Yeah, you're right, Todd. It was uh, actually fun to be back in that uh, committee room and see so many former colleagues today and, and to be able to cover it with you. Um, it was an unseemly performance from the Liberals. I think it's important to start right at the beginning. The person who is responsible for determining whether or not somebody has broken the law is called the Ethics Commissioner. His name is Mario Dion. He, he rendered an important decision last week that said that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau once again broke the law. That's clear. So this isn't some vague idea. It's not some breach of some administrative rule. He broke the law. That's a definitive decision. Today what we saw was an attempt to stop Mr. Dion from coming in and answering questions, but it was actually worse than that. So the Liberals sent in an old fixer from the Quebec side, former party president, not even a member of the committee, to, to shut the thing down. And then it actually got worse because a young member from the Toronto region, a fellow named uh, Nathaniel Erskine-Smith, takes the microphone and says, I would have loved to have hear him, heard him because here are all the things that are wrong with his report. But he knew full well that his Liberal colleagues were going to shut the thing down. It's all part of the cover-up that's been going on since the beginning. So Nathaniel Erth Erskine Smith delivers this full-throated attack on Dion, knowing full well he will not be given the right to answer. I mean, that's a breach of common decency, forget fancy rules of natural justice, allowing the other person the right to be heard. And, and I, I was gobsmacked at, at the behavior. It was such a, a, a puppet show. So you, were, you had one who was supposed to be the bad cop, the other one was supposed to show a little bit more ethics and morals and say, well, no, actually, I'd like to hear him. And then you realize he's using that platform to attack Mr. Dion. It was unseemly. It's unprecedented. Since the beginning, they've muzzled Jody Wilson-Raybould, so she wasn't able to give the full version of all of the attempts by Justin Trudeau's officers and himself to try to interfere in the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. Now they're shutting down the committee that just wanted to get more information, and they were also so bold as to tell nine people that they were not allowed to give full answers in the investigation. So the whole thing, obviously, as several people have said, it's going to wind up being decided by Canadian voters on October 21st. Will this drag on? I think it paints a picture of a government that believes it's above the law, that the law doesn't apply equally to everybody in our society, that some people are above the law. So if you're a rich corporation like SNC-Lavalin, they'll find a way to try to get you out of your trouble when you've broken the law. And if you're the prime minister and you get caught breaking the law, you can just stand there and say, I disagree with the conclusions of that report. It's an un unprecedented situation in Canadian law and in Canadian politics. Yeah, so let me ask you about that, because, you know, you're a lawyer, uh, and when you hear uh, some of the Liberals on that committee and the Prime Minister say exactly that, Tom, they say, you know, I, I disagree with the findings of the, the Commissioner, I disagree with his interpretation of the law, uh, does that confuse things in the minds of Canadians? Does it muddle things in the minds of Canadians? Well, of course... That's the purpose of that sort of statement, because when this report came out, I remember he was standing in full sunshine with a bunch of liberal mayors in Niagara-on-the-Lake. It was a lovely, lovely shot uh, for a pre-campaign. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Trudeau said two totally contradictory things. So he had a practiced line that he was supposed to deliver, written for him by his advisors, and he's usually good at delivering the lines prepared for him by his advisors. So he stood there and he said, Oh, I accept the conclusions of this report. I, no, sorry, I accept this report, but I, I disagree uh, with how we got to those conclusions. And the buck stops here. So that buck stops here was supposed to be the answer that people were going to retain. But ever since then, and increasingly, in fact, Monday in Quebec City, he, he basically denied the whole thing. So how can you, on the one hand, say you respect this important person who is named to judge the ethics of members of parliament, including the prime minister, accept his report and then deny you did anything wrong and say, and this is the galling part, 
I was doing this in the interest of Canadians. I was serving a higher purpose. You know, you can just imagine uh, if everybody in Canada was allowed to come up with their own excuse. Oh, sorry, I was going 180. Uh, I was late coming home. Uh, I was serving a higher purpose. It, it can't be that way. The law has to apply equally to everyone. This isn't a monarchy. Justin Trudeau is not the king, although there was a bit of humor in the title of the report because they called it Trudeau II uh, with the <laughs> Roman II, was sort of like Elizabeth II. So I think that maybe Mr. Gion was having a bit of fun with that one. Now, what about the Quebec factor here? And I, I spoke about it with Michelle Boyer a few moments ago, Tom. But, you know, you were a longtime politician, uh, in Quebec provincially, uh, before you became uh, an MP federally, and then, of course, leader of the NDP. Uh, this notion that the story plays out very differently in your home province than it does elsewhere in the country, and whether that is part of the Liberal calculation here with the election coming up. No question about that. Uh, because it's a very sensitive issue in Quebec. It's a we-they issue. The Bloc Québécois has been trying to scratch at that for some time, not getting much traction. Mr. Trudeau's been far more subtle in making that appeal. When he stands in front of a microphone in Quebec City and he says, I was just defending jobs, his message, of course, is I was defending Quebec jobs, and anybody who's criticizing my actions in SNC-Lavalin is attacking Quebec. There's no question that Mr. Trudeau is quite good at playing that particular game, and that's the one that he's been playing since this report was handed down. On the conservative side, Lisa Raitt, I think, has been pitch perfect. Her tone has been just right. This is about Justin Trudeau's behavior. It's not about those jobs in Quebec. She's been very careful not to get dragged into that. Charlie Angus, uh, also quite, quite careful in, in dealing with that. All right. We also want to bring up a statement issued by Andrew Scheer just coming out of this. And it says, I'm going to read it to you, Tom. Today, Liberal members of Parliament on the Ethics Committee had an opportunity to do the right thing and shine a light on the SNC corruption scandal. Instead, they used their majority to cover up the truth and are now complicit in Trudeau's political interference in SNC's criminal prosecution. Uh, does, it, does it sort of... Uh, starve this story of oxygen, though, the way this vote went down, if that's what the Liberals are hoping. I mean, we are two months away, and it is uh, August the 21st. Mr. Trudeau's got his own approach on these things. He always goes all in, Todd. So he gets blamed last week. He goes all in, says, I was just doing it for you. I might have sinned, but it was, it was for you. And he hopes that that sort of message is going to resonate with enough Canadians. Today, same thing. Sends in his liberal fixer from the Quebec side, shut this thing down. Thuggish behavior. They shut it down. Some thinking would have been, have the one hour with Mr. Dion. There'll be enough questions on both sides. It's so complicated anyway. A lot of the members of the public are tuning out on this thing, and nobody will be able to accuse us of a cover-up. I hadn't seen Mr. Shear's statement yet, but I'm not surprised because... It is a cover-up. That's what we're dealing with. You know, when you tell Jody Wilson-Raybould she can't talk about this, this, or this, she hasn't been able to give full version. When you shut down the Justice Committee, as they did a couple of months ago, that's part of a cover-up. Their excuse then was, oh, it's going to be looked at by the Ethics Commissioner. The Ethics Commissioner delivers a report. It gets to committee, as it always does. They invite the Commissioner, as you always do. And they shut it down because that's part of the cover-up. So the Liberals are just hoping that this stuff is too complicated, it's going to fly right over the heads of most people, that they'll be able to smile their way through the campaign, stick with generalities, say, well, we're certainly not as horrible as the Conservatives, you've got to vote us back in, and hope that this type of behaviour, unprecedented behaviour, a, a sitting Prime Minister found guilty twice of breaking the law, they're just hoping that they can get past it. And if Mr Trudeau were to be re-elected, he'd be able to say, you see, I, I'm, I'm right to say I'm above the law. We'll see whether Canadian voters go along with that. One last thing, you just touched on it that I want to dig in a little deeper if we can before we let you go. And I know you've given us a lot of time, so I appreciate your patience. But you were in that room Pleasure. and you were watching and following it closely. What, what were the Liberals, quote unquote, scared of if they were? In other words, why, why not do as you say? Why not let Mario Dion come up and, and sort of answer questions from both sides, uh, you know, expand on a few things? Was it the, the worry that there might be more there? Was it the worry of the story staying in the news cycle or, or more bad optics coming Coming out? I go straight to the reference uh, made by Elizabeth May, and I think she was on to something there. She said, look, we know that there are nine people who were not allowed to speak. And then in his report, he doesn't always name the people who are speaking. She, I would have, she said she would have loved to have been able to dig down on that. And I think it would have been the opportunity for Mr. Dion to give that extra information. I think that's precisely 
what the Liberals didn't want. They didn't want anybody to be identified as one of the nine people who are part of the blocking efforts of the Liberals. So the cover-up is to stop those people from speaking. We do know, because the RCMP has said that they're on the case now, that the RCMP has given itself the mandate to look at this thoroughly. Maybe that's also what they're worried about. Maybe it's one of the reasons that Mr. Trudeau very stubbornly refuses to apologize when obviously that could have put a stop to a lot of this. When he's in real trouble, he refuses to apologize. When it's easy tears on a historical issue, no problem. But he knows and he's got enough smart people around him to tell him, be careful because that could be considered or construed as an admission of some kind and it can come back to haunt you. If the RCMP does dig down on this, as they must, then Mr. Trudeau is probably getting good advice uh, to avoid uh, any admission because this if you think that the Dion report last week played havoc with the Liberals' campaign, wait till you see what would happen if we find out that the RCMP is pushing this, as it is, of course, their constitutional duty to do. Great conversation, Tom. Thank you for this.